Okay, so this week, NVIDIA's GTC 2025 conference is on in San Jose. And yesterday, Jensen Huang gave his keynote. Now, his keynote obviously focused a lot around what NVIDIA is doing for the data center. And of course, while this kind of keynote in the past perhaps would have been more aimed at developers, now, in many ways, it's really aimed at investors. So they had a whole variety of different things that they announced there. And one of the key themes that he talked about multiple times in relation to a variety of different products and services that they're offering is this whole idea that because of reasoning models, basically inference of tokens is going to go up massively. They had a whole mini video about tokens. He explained multiple times how basically reasoning models are going to generate more tokens and more tokens can be used for agentic things. They really tied together a nice sales story around what's been going on in the LLM models over the last six months or so. Now, going back to January this year, NVIDIA had announced these new family of Nemotron models, which are these Llama Nemotrons. And in the GTC keynote yesterday, while Jensen Huang didn't talk about them directly, they had some slides that pointed to these new versions of these Llama Nemotron models. And this time, basically being reasoning versions of those. So when I looked into it, it's basically a number of different models that they've released that build on using the sort of base model of the Llama 3.1 for the smaller ones and the Llama 3.3, I think, for the bigger ones. And then either distilled down from them and they've created a whole new size of models that are these 49B models. This Llama 3.3 Nemotron Super 49B V1, which totally sounds like some kind of sci-fi ray gun or intergalactic cruiser. But the interesting thing here is this is basically a distilled version of the Llama 3.3 70B model. So I've always found it quite weird that NVIDIA would basically use the Llama series of models rather than go and make their own. They certainly shouldn't be lacking for GPUs to be able to train their own. And they actually have a very strong frontier lab of researchers, etc., that you've got to think would be able to train their own models. But instead of that, they've basically piggybacked on Meta AI's Llama models. And they seem to be just experimenting with different kinds of post-training, different kinds of distillation, that kind of thing. So this 49B size allows them to basically reduce the Llama 70B down. But at the same time, they've also gone for different kinds of reinforcement learning here to try and capture what DeepSeek has done with these verifiable reward styles of reinforcement learning. So along with the Llama 3.3 Nemotron Super 49B V1, that's a mouthful to say every time I say it, they've also released the Llama 3.1 Nemotron Nano, which is an 8B version. Now, again, this has also had extra post training to give it the reasoning and thinking kind of style of something like the DeepSeek R1. Now, at the time that I'm recording this, I've yet to see any real breakdown or paper about what they've actually done with the training or numbers of examples or anything like that. But they have released the models. So the models are up on Hugging Face already. This is the 49B model. The one I'm going to look at is the 8B model. And the other thing is kind of cool is they've released this post-training data set. So my guess is that this data set is going to be really useful for helping people that do want to be able to train their own reasoning model or fine tune and improve their own reasoning model. Now, it's kind of funny to come in here and have a look and see that this data set seems to have been made with DeepSeq R1 in here. And of course, that is totally allowable because the DeepSeq R1 is an open model with an Apache 2 license that's not trying to stop people from using it to generate synthetic data, etc. But this data set is pretty impressive in that it's like it's 20 million samples that have been generated by a number of models, mostly by the DeepSeq R1, but also by some of the Quen models, some of the old Llama 3, Nemotron stuff, Mixtral, etc. 
basically all the models that had permissive licenses for people to be able to do this. So it is kind of cool that NVIDIA has basically made all this to train their own models, but then released it to people. And we can see that there are a whole bunch of different examples of different kinds of categories in here. So we've got a bit under 20 million that are math, 9.6 million that are code, 700,000 science, etc. in here. So it does seem like it's more than the actual 20 million samples in here. But anyway, you can use this yourself for training. This is definitely going to be useful for people who are trying to train up their own reasoning models. And we can see that they've got both a supervised fine tuning split, but they've also got an RL data split in there. So definitely interesting for filtering this if you wanted to use it and train your own model for this kind of thing. All right, as for the models themselves, if you want to try them out, NVIDIA has actually put up a place where you can try them. And you can see that if we put something in like this, we can have it running. You can actually see what's going on in the API, which is kind of nice for a demo purpose for people to see what's going on. But you can see also that what we can do is we can generate it without reasoning and then we can generate it with reasoning. So if I take this exact same prompt, that's doing it without reasoning. If I reset the chat and I do it now with reasoning, you'll see that we actually get a whole bunch of reasoning first. And that reasoning could be qu quite long in what it's actually done in there. And then basically gives us the final answer out. So this is really kind of cool because what they have done is they've made it so that in the model, you can actually turn on or off the reasoning elements. So let's jump into the code and have a look at how they're actually doing that in the Transformers library and have a play and see what we can actually do with this. Okay, so I've set the 8B model up in Google Colab and I have basically got it going with Transformers. And I really wanted to like this model, but unfortunately it's not really turning out that well for me. Okay, the thing that I do like about this model, which I think is a really interesting idea here, is the idea here that you can basically turn the thinking on or off. So you can see that basically you just inject this into the system prompt where it says detailed thinking off. And if we do detailed thinking off, we get an output like that. It's quite short. If we do detailed thinking on, we get a much longer output and we get these think tokens. And that's very reminiscent of the DeepSeq R1. You can see that we've got a whole bunch of thinking there. Once the thinking is finished, it closes out the think token and then we get the answer out there. So in theory, we should be able to just easily turn the thinking on or off as we go through this. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to always work like this. Now, they mention in the model card that sometimes you need to, if you want the thinking off, you can just pass through the, the thinking tags and you can turn them off. My issue is actually the direct opposite of that, is that if I want to have the thinking on for most of the time, it just seems to work some of the time and some of the time not. So he can see that I'm asking the typical question about the llamas, alpacas, vacunas. We get a lot of nice thinking in here. It's looking really good. We get our answer out. And it's quite an extensive answer that we get out. And sure enough, if we ask that with reasoning off, we get a much shorter answer less points in there, no thinking, etc. But then for a lot of other questions that I've tried where I do have the reasoning tokens or the thinking tokens on, it just decides for this particular one that it's not going to do it. Now, it seems to me that for things that are related to mathematics, to code, to things like that, it will very much go for the thinking. But even questions like this, where I'm asking it about the two different types of time in Greek, it gives me a pretty extensive answer back. Now, if I set the temperature to zero, it'll be very short answer back. But anyway, it gives me a pretty big extensive answer back. But notice there's no thinking tags in there, right? And the same for when I ask it, give me an analogy between music and a lighthouse. Now, I was kind of curious to see, okay, if I ask that same time question to deep C, what do I get back there? And I get a very nice answer back, but also I get a really whole bunch of different thinking in here of this really kind of interesting thinking about how it's trying to work out, okay, what are the details, all the typical things that we see and that personally I like a lot from DeepSeek 
out of this. Now, you can argue that, yes, of course, DeepSeek is a bigger model, etc. And that's true. But even with the smaller distilled versions of DeepSeek, we still saw those kinds of behaviors. So it seems to me, now you see when I come back down here and I ask it about the transformer model, explain how a transformer works. Now, that's obviously one that they had in their data set or something. It goes straight into the thinking tokens. We get everything sort of coming out and then we get our answer out. So if I come across to the 49B model, this does seem to give me a lot of thinking and also a lot of the thinking in the same kind of way as the deep seek. So it does seem that the 49B model is definitely an interesting one in that, okay, that seems to be much higher quality, but back to the 8B one, it just doesn't seem to perform. I kind of feel like there are already other models out there that are doing this kind of thing for around the same size, which are actually much better than the results that you get in here. So overall, I'd say have a play with it yourself. I'll put the links up to the code, but also to the actual NVIDIA demos where you can try this out. And if you can serve the 49B one yourself, that perhaps looks interesting. But for me personally, I'm not seeing the 8B is really worth it to go forward with this. So overall, an interesting release from NVIDIA. I certainly, I think the data set is really useful and awesome that the fact that they've released such a cool data set, the 49B does look nice if you can run it, but it would have been interesting to see them actually use one of the Quen models as a base model and, and try and do it that way with say a 32 billion size. And maybe that would have gotten us something better than the QWQ model out there. Will be interesting to see how people test this against the QWQ32 model and to see how it actually performs overall. As always, I'll put the links in the description below. I'd love to get your opinions on what sort of sizes do you think are the biggest size that you can personally serve locally. I know some of you are using multiple consumer GPUs and some of you are going right up to using a DGX machine, etc. But it's kind of interesting to sort of see what is the sweet spot in model size where it becomes really attractive to actually run the model locally rather than pinging an API in the cloud. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.